Welcome. This is the October 3rd Beehive Production User Call. We have Andrew, Matthias, Tara, Eva, and myself, Michael. And I'd like to say you are all cordially invited to the upcoming OpenZFS User and Developer Summit on the 26th through 29th in Portland, Oregon. It looks like my link disappeared, but someone can hopefully link that. That is openzfs.org with a real prominent link at the top. Um, that will be a rather fun, intimate, intense event. It's not a trade show. It is developers and users coming together a bit like a majorly extended production user call. And I think that's a hybrid format that should be a lot of fun. And thank you all here who can participate and assist. So for some breaking news, last night, Patrick, with whom I've been planning audio video equipment purchases and planning and documentation and all that, gave a talk at the New York City BSD user group, Nice Bug, and the video went up this morning, if not late last night. Uh, go ahead and check that out. The link is in the document. I can drop it in the chat. Uh, he gives a great summary of what he and I have been intensely up to between BSD CAN and EuroBSD CON. We never want to see events spending oh up to as, as of an earlier call this week on an unnamed event uh, up to fifteen thousand dollars on streaming, which sometimes goes absolutely nowhere. So we are working on building uh, caches of the East Coast, the West Coast. Uh, video rigs, and we have one in Europe, and we're building that out so that a three to four track conference can have cost effective, reliable, predictable um, uh, video, ideally in the future where anyone could be quickly trained and have it mailed to them and go. So that's been a project as per the talk, like a decades in the making. Tara had a great question. Uh, are there ever Beehive and Jail uh, user and developer summits. And I will give an answer here. So in the early days of Beehive, I pulled BeehiveCon out of thin air. And that was something very easy to do in Tokyo. Having an extra room was not too difficult. And now if I look back, wow, that started in 2014. And you'll see some familiar and not so familiar names. So that was a cadence during the really peak of Euro BS, of Asia BSD con, um, all pre lockdown. And that, that's my big measurement of difference. And it was uh, pretty much anything related to hypervisors, be it uh, Royer talking about uh, Zen, that was fair game. We may have had. Um, um, jail topics, but I very much wanted to have Zen as part of all of that. He had some uh, family growth, which made it a little more difficult for him to participate. And then at one point, a funny thing happened. It was very easy and affordable to have an extra full day in Ottawa. So we added a day which helped the organizers of BSD can simply have time to prepare. And I did a full day uh, beehive con there back in 2019. And fast forward to Coimbra, there was the first Euro beehive con. Oh, hang on, let me do the nice pretty Euro colors here. Um, uh, the new Slava Ukraini colors. And uh, that was during the, I believe Friday, yes, during the sort of dev summits and other activities. So, Philip and I did have a chance to talk in Dublin about what future add-on conferences could look like. And each event thinks it can be a good value add. Uh, sometimes the tutorials at conferences have been remarkably predictable and sometimes they've been fresh and lively and they were very fresh and lively this, this year at Euro. So I have not explored a standalone Beehive Con or Jail and Beehive Con or Trifecta Con, somewhat accurately, but um, it's a thing. So your ideas and suggestions are welcome. And while I'm at it, I will just punch through my tabs here that I've opened up from the document there. So Tara, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Is there a conference you've enjoyed in the past that you think could serve as a model 
please don't say Fosdem. That's a bit 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 big. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, for uh, in in my perspective, like piggybacking an existing conference would be be nice, like okay. the PSD can. Um, I don't know. I mean. I'm open to your suggestions. Yeah, I would say um, pause them would be great to meet people, but it's too messy. Yeah, it's it's a beast. <laughs> it's amazing. I'll grant you that, but it's yeah, it's no. huge. It's, if if anyone's been there, try. I think it's February first this year. Next coming yeah. year. So it's. Um, I've I've been there except for COVID. I've been there every year. Okay. Uh, I, this mostly to meet friends. Cool. Okay, so that said, Domogoy has had this hypercalls review since I think was it 2016. And does anyone here have experience with hypercalls on other hypervisors? Because I confess it's been long enough that I don't recall what it was achieving. And it like so many good ideas went off to review to die. Thanks for the work. It'll be very useful. Let's see some high level comments. There are a number of guests hyper calls. So those are hypervisor specific. Da, 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 da. It might be looked at the call sequences. So I want that on everyone's collective radar because if there's some value hiding there and it's 90 something percent ready, let's look at that last 10%. So there, dear listeners, it is, I have spoken. And moving on to a topic that's come up for years is uh, hardware offloading, get TSO, LRO. And that said, only this, this week did I hear about the 64 kilobyte uh, packet that is sort of a Franken packet produced for internal use. And so I did a quick bit of research before the call and found some resources. Some of them are just proprietary. Let's see, there is like uh, a description from VMware. So I will drop that in too. And it's a topic that um, I'm pretty sure is not taught in school or in the um, uh, CCNAs and friends. So I think the more we all collectively understand that, the better administrators we will be. So here's one article. And then the open compute article is good and does make some mention of the jumbo gram segmentation offload. So I will drop that in here too. Uh, we don't have yawn to fill in the blanks, uh, but if anyone, uh, one has an interest in that too. I don't think we can be too clear on this topic because it keeps coming up. Anyone, uh, Eva, you've worked with some pretty high-end hardware. Um, the narrative to date is always, oh, we set up a bridge. You shouldn't use offloading on an interface that's participating in a bridge. We got bitten in the behind, but then, oh, we just turned it all off and it worked. Well, I don't know earlier call this week, the jails call, we discussed the possibility of maybe having the the kernel or the bridge or some kernel component say, hey, anytime you add a hardware device with offload to a bridge, you disable it and potentially keep state and re-enable it when it exits. But um, what safety mechanism could be safe and uh, not impacting in unexpected ways remains to be seen. But the topic keeps coming up. So um, if you have any experience in this to share, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah, so I have come into that uh, problem a number of times, uh, and it goes back many releases of very specifically the, um, the IGB driver for the Intel one gig uh, mm -hmm. interfacing. So kind of almost as a rule, any system that I set up that has that type of Intel NIC will Pretty much immediately get TSO and LRO and pretty much any of the, the offloading uh, protocol offloads disabled. And it's not as much of a problem in the more recent versions of uh, the IXL driver for the 10 gig cards, but definitely with the one gig ones, it's 
it's been a big problem. And there was a there was a patch that I don't think made it upstream. Um, that I'll have to dig around for, but um, someone had kind of addressed that with the Intel source code itself. And uh, I had it running on a couple of motherboards to get around that. Uh, I didn't notice any specific performance benefits from having the offload on those interfaces, but it did prevent it from crashing or not crashing, but like having the network lock up. So I can go look for those uh, the patch information, but as far as like safety controls over having the kernel automatically disable that if a bridge is being used. Yeah, that's that's certainly a way to, to, to kind of get around that concern and to mitigate a variety of user experiences where people don't know that that's an, a potential issue. And so if we do that, I just think it should have a very obvious log entry that says it's doing what it's doing. And as well to have controls in like sys control over those flags so that people can optionally you know, control um, the automatic uh, flagging effectively. Do you know if so, anyone's doing that? Yeah, or... I think it... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, do you know if anyone like, you know, the VMX driver is any other OS doing that to our knowledge, be it Linux, KVM, Zen? Mm, I haven't seen automatic disablement, but okay. I have seen discussions around that being applied in an automated manner, like you know, through Ansible or um, Salt or something of that nature. Okay. You mentioned the IGB driver. Um, was that regardless of a bridge or specifically in a context like a hypervisor? That was just in any case, not any case. Specific. Good yeah. to know. Um, that's, that's a damning statement. Uh, On our it side. May be linked. I, I, I would need to, so I wanted to spend some more time with this particular issue a couple of years ago, but mm -hmm. there was an identifiable issue where the early stages of EFI loading for the network driver in the BIOS, right? You can go in and, and select whether or not it's going to load legacy or, or EFI for the PCI devices, right? Yeah. And um, I noticed that the legacy BIOS did not have this problem to such a degree that EFI did, Got uh, it. at least on the super micro motherboards that I was testing at the time. Um, and I thought, well, I should probably try this out on some Dells and mm -hmm. other, uh, newer versions of the motherboard EFI system and such. But at this point, I don't know how many people are really using legacy for production that it makes sense to dedicate that type of engineering time and focus. But it would be great to be able to track uh, for debugging output, the version of the EFI bootloader that's being used and see what firmware is also running on the NIC itself. Because I know that Intel you know, corrects a certain number of things over periods of time, but I know that a lot of people don't really make an effort to update their firmware. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which well, vendors can, don't always make that easy. It's true, very much so. Sure. So yeah, there's, there's a, a variety of ways we can go about investigating this in an automated manner and get some uh, correlations and like a matrix of, of support and versions and whatnot. Uh, it's really a question of whether or not we want to invest the time. Sure, so sure. It would be a fun project to work on though. <laughs> yes, and it sounds like <laughs> one, it's getting better. Two, if you have that patch handy from an old mailing exchange, maybe drop that in. Um, three, the fact that Gee, my networking is broken. I have no idea why, especially if it's at like a, a, a attempted net boot stage. That's just cruel to the user. Um, Andrew, you were jumping in with something. I was. Um, we have had what sounds like kind of on our side of things, some of the opposite problem um, where we have had, uh, I mean, obviously our, our network stack is very different from the BSD network stack. But when we have situations where we're using some of the some of the more advanced features where we're where where we're having like um, 
um, oh, what is it called? Aggregate devices and whatnot that we're binding to. Um, if we're not careful to make sure TCP offloading is disabled for the VM, it just ends up with totally mangled packets that are that that will fail. So the VM requires it or hates the it? VM needs it disabled. Okay, um, got it. And my theory for that has has been now for a bit that because it's got that intermediate um, layer that's doing stuff, it, it it things are happening before it reaches the card to get the offloading steps done. Got it. So. Okay. Yeah. And we will not be solving this issue in one call, but any and all clarity is appreciated. And if you find that patch, fantastic. And it talk about a tale of tears, especially if it's going back to the earliest EFI implementations. And to hear that it was on IGB interfaces, of which there are probably dozens in my house, uh, that is unfortunate. So let's see, moving on, there is an anonymous shrew with an update. Eva, I will move you there. Um, while the anonymous shrew types in this non regret innovation steps, uh, who is typing, if I may? Sorry, I'm the untamed shrew. I keep forgetting to, to get, if you can hear me, I just wanted to, to ask yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, regarding the, the previous topic, Yes. Uh, whether it could be a, a non-regret, non-invasive move to, to um, whenever there's a VM, I mean, anything that requires routing uh, that some sort of, of uh, warning for people to be on the lookout, right? Uh, you are uh, uh, leveraging this uh, if you if you if you if you exper experience any uh, uh, unexpected uh, performance uh, uh, hit on on your networking, something you know, just to let people know that that's one thing they could be looking at. They, they could be beaten by the so if we don't want to go into the full out uh, uh, finding a solution and uh, a way to 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 address the situation uh, that make might take some time to at least you know make it part of the mind space of people that uh, maybe they have a problem with that mm -hmm. well and i i that by means of drugs or something like that Sorry. I suspect the wiki page does not say anything, uh, but I'll make a comment here. As a wiki, a wiki. Okay. Uh, Matthias, have you been impacted by that? Not by this issue uh, in particular, mm -hmm. uh, but similar, similar things. You know, finding out after uh, after uh, 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 some time of scratching your head, especially in the in the beehive and jails space, where uh, at least from my experience of a, you know, I'm not a I'm not a sysadmin. I don't have great uh, networking uh, uh, fundamentals, and for me, I, I'm I love PF. Uh, and I love jails, I love Beehive, uh, but having um, suddenly uh, uh, things, networking uh, issues is like super, super usual. Uh, some of them, uh, by experience, uh, I, I can have a, a hunch about what's the origin. Some, it, you know, five years down the line, uh, I, I find this, uh, yeah, entry somewhere, and uh, and then I, I find out that it was uh, this problem, and that a lot of people know about it, but I don't. Understood. Or I didn't. 
and Unix systems are famous for giving us all enough rope to hang ourselves with and our friends and our pets and you name it. So, yeah, uh, let's just, I mean, I will personally keep chiseling on this until there's some broader clarity. And I very much thank you for all of your input. Okay, I'm going to help this little girl. Um, Matthias, while you've got great audio, could you... Uh, Tell us what's going on with these uh, Doug Podman calls. Uh, it, it was just came back to my mind uh, uh, in this, uh, there's this weekly follow-up call for uh, this uh, OCI containers on FreeBSD uh, using JL's uh, initiative uh, where uh, there's a time-boxed um, focused effort with a uh, uh, to to test uh, stress test test uh, support people who want to test uh, the use of uh, uh, OCI compatible uh, um, container uh, container implementation uh, with active support from uh, from Doug and uh, um, a few other, other people and uh, uh, Tara. Uh, is part of that uh, of that effort and has been uh, also uh, uh, documenting uh, quite a few things. Uh, so that would be the, the context. And one of the things that uh, uh, Doug mentioned, uh, and based on, on one of my questions about how do we... Uh, um, so we were... Talking about uh, sorry, uh, uh, net graph uh, networking uh, as part of uh, so for jails and as part of the, what was so what was being used uh, for this OCI uh, compliant uh, efforts so VNet at the moment and the the he asked why I was asking about this and I told him that in my experience again might be completely atypical, but one of the uh, uh, challenges uh, I have in those not fully, uh, um, you know, lar not large scale deployments, but nevertheless uh, production de deployments, having to deal with, uh, with uh, so not on an industrial scale, but having to deal with VMs uh, and the, um, so Beehive and jails, uh, and now it would be also containers on the same machine. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of uh, parallel efforts. So you end up having different bridges, different stacks, and uh, it could make sense. I mean, I find myself in the situation where I want to this jail to speak with that, uh, with that uh, uh, VM. And how do I do that in a way that is maintainable, right? It's all very easy to do in a... Uh, in, uh, in um, case by case uh, uh, way, but if we if we had some sort of uh, um, conventional uh, wisdom about uh, 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 how we do uh, routing for those uh, solutions and how we do that in a, in a way that's compatible um, between uh, these different uh, uh, primitives, and uh, I know that in my case it would make a lot of sense. And that was the context for which uh, Doug was saying that he didn't really see the need for that in his day to day, uh, or in what he had come into in contact with. But that, uh, in any case, eventually uh, it would make sense uh, from his point of view to 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 target uh, um, VMs, so be high VMs instead of jails for that kind of. Uh, so for this uh, consumerization uh, uh, effort, because the high VM, VMs in the end had uh, 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 were probably better suited uh, and enabled uh, more complex uh, or more fine-tuned uh, uh, use cases. So it would make sense at some point if it were a uh, Possible to to target the hive uh, instead of chairs. So I just wanted to ask if uh, how 
how that ranked for uh, for everyone here. Uh, Sorry for may. the long. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, Tara may. has been very much and, involved in that. Go ahead. And I actually would love to have Eva's support on this. I believe this is something like Doug is trying to emulate what this Kata container is doing. Um, like using lightweight VMs to to spawn instead of jails, uh, but I'm not sure this is actually the case. Uh, Doug is actually going to address because I know is is working on on Kubernetes, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if you want to do something like that. And for the broader context, was there a call that took place recently? And do you have a link to that? Be it recording or agenda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's there. a recurring call. I will share that on the. Thank we'll you. Put that on the. Um, and I couldn't help but notice Doug has not been able to attend the jail calls, which is completely fine. But uh, we do want people to have that source of information. So let's find out where it currently so, is. Can you, Michael? Can you just correct my statement. I'm not saying that Doug is looking at lightweight VM. Oh, I said yeah. I possibly this is what he's referring to. So it's just an hypothesis. Uh, it's maybe looking at kata containers. Oh, you said kata? Kata okay. containers. So do you want me to write it? Yeah, please. Uh, drop it in there uh, in chat. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, and if you've got a link for Kata container, yeah, of I'll course. Two words Eva, is it is, is it this one? Yeah, right there. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh, that's new. Uh, let's take a look. Thank you. No, it's not new actually. Well, it's new it's to been me. Been a while. Oh no, no okay. I've never heard of that. Let's take a peek. Yeah, and also there is something else, but it's actually off the off topic, which is Firecracker. Yes, and that's yeah. that I've definitely heard of. And Colin Percival, the FreeBSD release engineer, is working actively on that but uh what is a kata container basically instead of using the equivalent of jail or the dish root and everything else you're using a lightweight vm that boots and goes into the the jail the sorry the oci container so you have a the, the reason for that is having memory segregated mm -hmm. environment through for the, the containers okay um uh, thank you for that. You'll learn something every day. Just, uh -huh. just double check if I'm I right. Yeah, that's correct. Cool. So I'll thank leave you. one of the R630s in the colo set up with Red Hat so we can test that in addition to the other two that are set up for FreeBSD. And I will do my best to get you that login today. Cool. What just happened? Oh, I'm on my own document. Got it. Um, okay, thank you for that. Uh, and I put in your comment, Kata, Kata containers are awesome. Kata is awesome. Uh, I threw in a quick point there, which was that you can jail VMs for a layer of security, if there's any chance of you know escaping that VM. And from a recent call, Chris put his scripts from his EuroBSDCon tutorial online, which discuss very interesting. <laughs> Goodness, his scripts, which intimately describe how he jails VMs. And I'm not sure if he's using Bridges, VNet, or NetGraph, but they are all here. So. I will put that in the chat. And it was great to see him and shake his hand in Dublin. And then we didn't have a free moment to talk for the entire conference. That was a theme of that event. So, so another topic, that yes, Matthias, please. I don't know if, just correct me if I'm wrong, Matthias, um, that you said the coexist, network coexistence between jail VMs and containers, was it, was it a topic? It was a, 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 a side. It was a side topic. It was. It was. A, it came up uh, five ten minutes during the conversation. It was not the main topic at all. But uh, okay. yeah, I would be. I would be very interested if there is a kind of best practices for them at the moment. 
I'm currently using my humble machine here down down the uh, down the desk. Uh, just bridges, just bridges between VMs and Jail and Podman. It's kind of working, but I don't know if it's production level. And is that with uh, bridges, VNet, or Netcraft, or all three? Uh, VNet. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's also one of the things that uh, puts so your audio has given up if it's usb reset it matthias your audio has gone south i'm sorry to say i'm guessing a computer was involved And while you reboot audio, uh, oh, yep, you've lost your mic on Zoom. Um, I'll make note your as is Eva for jails. And has everyone seen NetGraph Buddy? It is in the documents here. That's um, that is a useful tool from Daniel, and I will just throw it in there because this, this is one of those perennial topics that keeps coming right up. And it came up just in the last call where, okay, we have the canonic, we have the handbook page, we have the canonical uh, Clara article, and then, wow, we've exhausted the available documentation. Uh, Matthias, you're still missing a microphone. No worries. I see that. Um, anyway, uh, going on it would be good to have an outlook on what's cooking in the Beehive development timeline. Ooh. Yeah, that's a tricky one. And I did lead with that Domagoy uh, hyper call review that's been languishing for what's now, what, eight years? Um, uh, a theme emerged from EuroBSDCon REST. I don't know if that was a typo or what. Uh, let's take a look at that link oh, topic and I want to just share this lovely colorful thing at the bottom so this came up on the on some calls earlier and uh, we have many of the tools we need we do not have the documentation to go with them and we go in circular discussions on oh can we do this and why is it a new discovery for everybody? So I think those who have a little time, motivation, and an interest, please try to jump in and uh, work on documentation because more often than not, it's like, well, does VM have, does Beehive have live migration? Well, no, VM Beehive implements a rather good near live using ZFS where you quiesce and shift and go, which is really good for many use cases. And even that's not well documented, nor is it assisted with tools to use that elsewhere. So thank you for the office information. Tuesdays at 5 p.m. UK. Um, gee, how close is that to Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific when the uh, jail call takes place did they simply uh go with the, the same time which is fine they have every right to but thank you for those links i will maybe unsuccessfully make the font size generic uh ba, 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 ba. cool um i will consolidate here but thank you very much for that there are the uh oci office hours. So to, to for those who want to attend, there is the information. Um, this is a, oh, I see. Uh, open container. Oh, Slack channel. Thank you. It doesn't say Slack channel. It, it's, it's on the hour bef just before, well, an hour before the, the jail. I see. Every Tuesday. Okay. And 
What is oh caps lock on? Sorry, uh, J A. Thank you for clarifying that. That explains a lot. Um, so now that your audio is back, um, I did address that somewhat. Uh, the beehive development timeline along with with this note, this real subtle giant three colored three font note here that uh, it's kind of up to all of us to documenting what we're doing. Uh, so often it's a documentation question. And actually, Chris Mortz has been great about pointing out that, hey, it, these, from the enterprise working group, many of these issues are documentation issues. Um, I will drop this below it. So I will be beating that drum in addition to the other drums I mentioned earlier on things like hardware offloading. So that all said, I can't share the screenshot here, but apparently the both VMs and VNet sharing the same bridges. Tata, yes. Um, if you have scripts to share, drop them in. If you've got blog posts to share, if you've got manual pages or wiki pages to share, don't Hesitate, please. Um, I don't. So, I'm sorry. No worries I, uh, at probably all. Probably it's, it's a documentation problem. Okay. Well, um, let me throw one more thing in there. The, uh, I'm going to go a little bit all soapboxy here and share another article. Scrolly, scrolly, clicky, clicky. Oh, this was something I came up with in January, and uh, we are all guilty of it. It is uh, stop blogging and start documenting. There are so many great examples of, well, examples of great wisdom out there, and sometimes they're stuck in a Fediverse post, and it's the answer many are looking for, but there are very few channels to getting those bits of wisdom into official documentation. And then sometimes that official documentation has barriers to easy contribution. So I'm not saying there's an easy button in any of this. However, uh, we're all guilty of uh, <laughs> yawn belting out precisely how to do something better and then me thinking uh oh i stopped the recording 10 minutes ago and that is not an efficient pipeline to the official handbooks wikis etc so i purely ask everyone just to be conscious of that uh stop logging okay that said, anything else at this time? Um, well, yes, that's, a, that's a super, super uh, important thing. And when you're saying start documenting, so the, the main documentation sources I use are, the, of course, the handbook and uh, the porter's handbook. So when you're saying start documenting, what, is the, what are the targets that you would uh, point us to? And what would be the mechanisms to get stuff uh, on that? So people love or hate the free BSD wiki. I've found it to be, as long as you have a working account, um, it is one of the easiest access mechanisms available in FreeBSD land. Um, I know Antronix is experimenting with a, a, an, Illum, an Omni OS handbook. So let's give this one a try. And mind you, the previous, the Beehive FAQ evolved from something I maintained at beehive.org and someone said, hey, put it on the wiki. And it somewhat went there to die, but that's just the nature of the beast. There are very few people at the time who could contribute much. But for example, on these recent calls, you may have seen me pounding my head against um, ARM64 Beehive. Well, I just quickly put out my examples of working text and say the 9PFS, the moment I had it. I'm like, okay, quick, what's the syntax? Well, this seemed to work. This seemed to work. Have a nice day. Uh, that was the, 
to, to use a popular FreeBSD term, that was the least friction uh, strategy for what I was doing. Um, do you, Matthias, have wiki access? Yep, yep, yep. Nope. Uh, I've, I've added a couple of uh, edits here and there, so I will target. That's a good, uh, that's a very good. Uh, and that question's not just resource. for Matthias, maybe not so much for Andrew on Illumos, but uh, Eva and Tara, do you have wiki access? I have not uh, tried lately, so I'll have to okay. look at that. I made if a new account. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm Me sorry. neither, but there, if there is anything like need some bit of expansion, just let me know and I'll try to work on it. So it is by no means a panacea, but it's what we have. So there you go. Um, I must run. Uh, do we have anything else quick to talk about, or would you like to talk amongst yourselves? I do have one question. Uh, if someone can listen to me uh, for 30 seconds, but that doesn't need to be recorded. Uh, okay. And it's not strictly behind. Okay, well, let's wrap up the official call. I just need to step away for like two minutes, but uh, how about we wrap up the call at say 52 after? And I thank you very much. I will be in part of an event next week, so that might be challenging and maybe Antonig can help out. Um, Andrew, I think you know what I mean when I say, would you like the honors? Watching your Be mic. sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.